Okay, so we're going to be doing um, chapter 27, Basic Trigonometry from my new book, Overcoming ACT Math. If you're interested in getting it, it's available on Amazon. So um, what I wanted to do first is just um, remind you to always look at the description for any updates or like extra links to extra practice problems or tips that I um, add to these chapters over time. And then um, also attempt to do the problems on your own first if you have bought this book for the best results before watching the video for explanations. And then um, there's one little error if you have the very first edition of this book. Um, I've updated it in the new one, but it says number 16, A is um, supposed to be a plus. So just know if you have, if you're one of the very first people that bought this, just change that to a plus symbol instead. And then now let's go over some of the basic terminology and formulas that you're going to need to know before beginning this chapter. So here I have an example of a right triangle. And if we were to find the sign of let's say sine of C, meaning angle C right here. C is considered our reference angle. It's the angle we're referring to. Now, when we are referring to that angle, that tells us what is considered our opposite, our adjacent, and our, uh, our adjacent side. And then our hypotenuse is the one that always stays the same. So you might have learned in school an acronym called SOCATOA. And that's an acronym to remember what sine, cosine, and tangent are. So sine is the so in SOCATOA. And that means it's opposite over hypotenuse. So because we're referencing angle C, the opposite side is going to be 5, and the hypotenuse is 13. So this would be equal to 5 thirteenths. Now, be careful because your reference angle can change. For instance, this is where people get stuck. They think it's always the same, but it's not. If we say we want to find the sine of B, your reference angle is now B. So you're changing what's going to be your opposite. So now, because B is our reference angle, the opposite side is 12 the hypotenuse is 13. So just because it's sine for the same triangle doesn't mean it's going to be the same exact value. It depends on what your reference angle is for all the stuff with trigonometry. That's true. So sine, cosine, tangent, secant, all of that. Cosecant. Now, if I wanted to find the cosine, ka, so cosine of, let's say, b, that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, the adjacent side is going to be the side that's next to the angle, but not the hypotenuse. So it's going to be this 5 over the hypotenuse, which is 13. Toa is what we use for tangent. So if I want to find, let's say, the tangent of C right here, that would be opposite over adjacent. So opposite side, 5 over adjacent side, 12. 5 twelfths. Now, we have some um, special ones called secant and cosecant. So let's say I want to find the secant of angle C. Secant is just the same thing as 1 over cosine of the reference angle. So if you know cosine of C, we could just take the flip or the reciprocal. So cosine of C, let's find that. Cosine of this reference angle C, reference angle C that's ka, so it's going to be the um, adjacent over the hypotenuse, so 12 over 13. Since secant is just 1 over cosine, I just need to flip this to its reciprocal. So that's going to be equal to 13 twelfths. Now, if I want to know the cosecant of C, that's the opposite. It's 1 over the sine of C. So we already found sine of C, so I just have to flip it upside down for the cosecant of C which would make it 13 over 5. Now, I remember which one's the 1 over cosine and 1 over sine as it's the opposite of what you would expect. Like secant starts with an S, so you would expect it to be 1 over sine, but it's the opposite. It's 1 over cosine. Same thing with cosecant. It's um, opposite of what you would expect. You would expect 1 over cosine because they both start with C, but it's sine, actually. Um, so that's just a little extra tip. And then really quick, I just want to point out some extra formulas on the formula page before we get started with some problems. So let's go and do that. And actually, let me leave a marker on this page so I don't forget what page we're on. So in this book, there are um, chapter four is the math formulas, the initial math formulas. So you have like some of your initial stuff, like the hypotenuse of Stokotoa stuff. And then um, on the like a couple pages later, it has some of the trig identities. Now, these are going to be the main trig identities that you're tested on for the exam. But if you want to pause this video, here are some extra ones as well that you might want to consider. And let's go to now doing the questions. So we're going to start with um, this triangle is going to be used for questions one through seven. Um, so we're going to say, what is the value of sine of B? So this is our reference angle B. The value of sine of B, that's going to be opposite over the hypotenuse. 
Now, the opposite side for B is over here. We don't know what that is. Now, what you could do is you could have memorized your Pythagorean threes to know that this is four, or you could do um, the Pythagorean theorem and say three squared plus X squared for this side equals five squared, and you would have solved it and found out that that's four. Either way, that works. So sine of B, B is our reference angle. The opposite side is four, and the, um, the hypotenuse is going to be five. So it's going to be equal to four fifths. Now we have the same reference angle, but we're finding the cosine of B. So cosine is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's going to be equal to adjacent three over hypotenuse five. Now we wanna know the tangent of B. So tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So if A, or sorry, if B is our reference angle, and um, we have these as our side lengths, the opposite would be four, and the adjacent would be three. So it would be equal to four thirds. What is the value of secant B? So now we want secant B. Remember, secant is equal to one over the cosine of B. So if we know what cosine is, cosine of B is three fifths, we just have to flip it upside down, so then it's five thirds. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the live. Thanks for the likes. And let's go to number five. What is the value of cosecant B? So cosecant B is going to be one over the sine of B. So sine of B, we already found out was four fifths. So if I want to find the cosecant of B, it's just gonna be one over that, or another way of saying that is the reciprocal. So it's going to be five fourths instead. So now let's go to number six. It says we wanna find the cosecant of C now. So our reference angle is changing. We wanna find one over the sine of C. Excuse my dog, sorry, she's a little bit sick right now, but she's fine. Um, so we have cosecant of C is equal to one over sine of C. So C is our reference angle. So if I want to find the sine of C, let's start with that. Sine of C is going to be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So opposite is three, the hypotenuse is five. So it's gonna be equal to three fifths. So then we're going to take the reciprocal of that and that's just gonna be five thirds. Number seven, what is the value of cotangent of B? So cotangent of B is gonna be equal to one over tangent of B. That's just my dog, she has kennel cough, but she's totally fine. It's just she has to be quarantined in my room. Um, so then let's go and find out what tan of B is. Well, we already found that it was four thirds. So one over tan B is just going to be the reciprocal of that. So it's going to be three fourths for that one. So now we're using this triangle for um, questions number eight and nine. So this is going to be four. Sorry, guys. She's just having a little moment, but she'll stop soon. So we know that this is four because we could have memorized our Pythagorean threes, or you could have done Pythagorean theorem and done three squared plus, you could have called the size x, side x and said that's x squared is equal to five squared, and you could have solved it for what x is and got it four. So now um, what we're going to do, um, she's not barking, she's coughing, she has kennel cough. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, what is the value of sine b minus cosine c? So sine of b, this is going to be our reference angle for sine of b. Sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine of B is going to be equal to opposite four over the hypotenuse five, four fifths. Minus the cosine of C, which is gonna be adjacent over the hypotenuse, but for C. So we're referencing angle C, we want the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so four over five. So when we subtract that, we get zero. So the answer would be zero. Which of the following are equal to three-fourths? So three-fourths would be this over this, that side over that side. So let's look at um, tan of C. So tan of C is going to be, this is our reference angle, C. So then um, let's go and do um, opposite over adjacent. Hold on, guys. Let me just block some people. Okay. Okay. So um, we're going to do the opposite over the adjacent. So opposite over adjacent, so three-fourths. So that is equal to three-fourths, so that's good. Now let's do cotangent of B. So now our reference angle is B. Now remember, cotangent of B is equal to one over the tangent of B. So you can find it that way. 
or you could use one of the identities, which tells us that um, our tangent of one of our complementary angles equals the cotangent of the other. Um, so these are complementary angles because B and C add up to 90 because 90 plus whatever these are has to equal 180. So these must add up to 90. You could do that. Or you could find the one over the tangent of B if you want to. So we need to find tangent of B. Well, tangent of B is going to be equal to tangent is opposite over hypotenuse, or sorry, opposite over adjacent is what I meant, the TOA in SOCA So opposite over adjacent is, uh, wait, hold on, tangent of, or sorry, tangent of B is four thirds, and then we're finding cotangent. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. So then cotangent is going to be just the reciprocal of that, so that's going to be three fourths. So that works as well. And then we're going to now say, okay, cotangent of 90 minus C. Well, remember, these had to add up to 90. B plus C has to add up to 90 because the whole triangle has to add up to 180 degrees inside. So that has to equal to 90. So that means that B is equal to 90 minus C. So this is really saying the cotangent of B, which we already found, was equal to 3 fourths. So all of them are equal to 3 fourths. So now let's go to number 10. It says the figure below shows the location of David's park bike at point B, David's house is at point A, and David's school is at point C. Which of the, which is 175 yards from point A, um, which is 175 par, uh, ah, yards from point A, which of the following expressions can be used to calculate the distance from B to C? So we want to know this right here. Um, the angles in the figure are labeled in degrees. Okay, so right away they gave us two angles in a triangle so remember all three of them have to add up to 180 so that means that angle b this angle right here plus 58 degrees plus 40 degrees has to add up to 180 degrees so if we add 58 plus 40 that's going to be 90 uh 98 sorry this is supposed to be a plus sign plus 98 is equal to 180 then we just have to subtract 98 from each side over here. And um, when we subtract 98, that's going to be 82, yeah. So then this cancels out and we get that angle B is equal to 82 degrees. So this is going to be 82 degrees right over there. So that's gonna help us now apply the law of sines um, formula. Now, one thing you could have, if you don't automatically see that this is law of sines, you could have looked at the answer choices to help you and you could have seen the pattern that this matches up with the law of sines um, formulas. So all law, law of sines says is that if you take the sine of an angle, like let's say the sine of 82 degrees and put it over the opposite, 175, it has to be equal to if you do the same thing with the other angles and opposite sides. So it has to be equal to, it looks like they're using, um, let's see, 58. Let's try 58 um, because it's across from the BC side and we're trying to solve for what BC is. So we could say it's equal to the sine of angle A, sine of 58 degrees over the opposite side that we're solving for, which we just labeled with a question mark. So now if I just cross multiply, and you could use an, um, an X or a question mark. I just personally use a question mark sometimes, so this could be an X if you want. So we're going to cross multiply, and then this is going to be sine of 82 degrees times the question mark is equal to 175 times the sine of 58. All I did was cross multiply. Now I'm going to divide each side by sine of 82 because I want to get the question mark, what I'm solving for by itself. So then I'm going to get that that's equal to 175 sine of 58 degrees over sine of 82 degrees. So then that would be answer choice A. Thank you guys for liking and sharing the live. And remember, if you're interested in getting my book, it's available now on Amazon. This is what it's called, Overcoming ACT Math by Sofia Garcia. So let's go to number 11 for the figure above or below, it should say, which of the following is not true. So we're looking for what's not true. I always like to circle this just to make absolutely sure because you would be amazed how many people still, even though it's all capitalized or bolded or whatever, even when it's like underlined and bolded and all capitalized, they still answer in the affirmative by accident. Um, it's no problem, guys. I'm glad you're enjoying the live. So what we're going to do now is we're going to find what's not true about this triangle right here. 
So I'm going to see, I see right here that there's an easy one that I can already like rule out if it's true or not, the cosine of x1. So this is x. So remember, cosine is the ka in Sokotoa. So cosine is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So if I want the cosine of angle x, I want the adjacent side, 36 over the hypotenuse, 85. So it's 36 over 85. So that's true. Remember, we're looking for what's not true. So I need to cross that out. Now, one of, the, um, one of the formulas that you could have memorized that I showed at the beginning of this video um, that you can go back to if you need to when this is posted on YouTube is um, that the cosine of some angle, like in this case x, is equal to the sine of the complementary angle. So the complementary angle would be this angle because it's equal to 90 minus x because this is 90, right? So that means that these have to add up to 90. So this would have to be 90 minus x, and this would have to be x. So then this, if we just manipulate this equation, we could get that exact um, trig identity. We could say, I'm going to add sine of 90 minus x to each side, and that's going to tell me that cosine of x is equal to sine of 90 minus x. So all it is is like the cosine of one angle um, equals the sine of the complementary angle. So that's true. We want what's not true. So we're going to cross that out. So now let's go to answer choice H. So remember, this identity said that cosine of x is equal to sine of x. We found out that cosine of x already equals 36 over 85. So we could say that sine of the complementary angle is the same exact thing. That's true. We're looking for what's not true. Now, there's, um, now the cosine of 90 minus x, the cosine of this angle is not going to be equal to 36 over 85. That's not one of our trig identities, so that's the one that would be not true. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the live. Remember to like and share, please. And then um, let's go to this one. So it says, for the circle shown below, FJ, meaning this right here, is the diameter, and it's equal to 14 inches. So let's label that, that FJ is equal to 14 inches. Point G is located at the center of the circle. So this is just point G right over here. Sorry, I had to fix that for. And um, as labeled in the figure below, the measure of arc FH, this right here is 50 degrees, and the measure of arc J JK, so like from here to here, is 135, 135 degrees. What is the measure of HJ? So we're trying to find HJ. I'm going to label that with an X right here. This, we're finding this length right over here. Now, um, one of the um, formulas that's in chapter four for um, circles tells us that um, if we are intercepting an arc, um, our angle is going to be half of the intercepted arc. So if you look at the diameter, the diameter splits this circle in half, right? Half of a circle would have an arc length, this whole entire arc length right here. Half of a circle is 180 degrees. So this arc length is 180 degrees. This angle right here, FHJ, intercepts that arc. So it has to be half of the intercepted arc's degrees. So this would have to be a 90 degree angle right here. So we have a right triangle. Um, so that can help us figure out what we're supposed to do now. Because remember, for the trig identities, like the Sokotoa stuff, sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, sorry, that's my dog, um, has to, um, we can only do that with a right triangle. So by knowing that this is a right triangle, I now know that I can apply that stuff, um, all the Sokotoa stuff, to this, um, this scenario right here. So let's see what we can do. Um, okay, so I know that that's equal to 90 degrees. I know that um, this, I can also figure out, is intercepting, the intercepted arc is going to be 50 degrees. So this is going to be 25 because it's half of that. So, um, and then this would have to be 65. Yes, my dog is completely fine. She just has kennel cough right now, but she's on meds and everything. She just quarantined in my room for the other animals. So this would have to be 65 because 90 plus 25 plus 65 adds up to 180 degrees. So now I can figure out, okay, I can take like the, the cosine and sine and stuff of one of these angles right here, the 65 or the 25, to figure out um, what this mystery side is. Now the mystery side is going to be right over here. So if I were to say, hey, I know that this is a 14, so I have the hypotenuse side, the hypotenuse, H, is equal to 14, and I want to find the adjacent side, we'll label this A for adjacent, well, I know that cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So, sorry, I, met, I just got distracted by my dog, but I'm getting on with it. So, 
if I take the cosine of 25, this would be the adjacent side and this would be the hypotenuse. So it would be the cosine of 25 degrees is equal to, and then that would be x over 14. So then I could just multiply each side by 14 to get x by itself. So then it would be 14 cosine of 25 degrees is equal to x. So then it's going to be, that's answer choice B. F minus K is equal to 15. Um, when someone asked, is the answer C? No, it's B right there. Um, we learn, you learn this in your, um, it depends because like different states have different like ways that they teach math, but typically this is in a class called pre-calculus, but sometimes they separate it into other classes. Um, so then let's go to number 13. So suppose um, theta is between zero um, degrees and 90 degrees. If cosine of theta is equal to three sevenths, then what is the value of tangent of 90 minus theta? Okay, so first of all, let's draw a um, triangle. So let's draw our right triangle to picture this. So this will be our right angle. And then, by the way, um, I have students all the time ask me if that's like the only way you can draw a triangle. No, you can draw it different ways. It's just this is like the way that I typically draw it. Um, but as long as there's like one right angle, you're fine. But you could draw different orientations of it. So basically, I'm going to say that this is theta right down here. That's going to be my right angle. And then um, they said that the cosine of theta is equal to 3 sevenths. Remember, cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. So if theta is our reference angle, because we're taking the cosine of theta, the adjacent side would be 3, the hypotenuse would be 7. And we want to know the value of 90 minus theta. Remember, the other angle right over here is the complementary angle to theta. So this is equal to 90 minus theta up there. So the tangent of this angle would be tangent is equal to opposite over the um, adjacent toa and soka toa so the opposite side would be three and then the adjacent side would be this mystery side that we don't know so we have to solve for that now if you have two sides of a right triangle you can use pythagorean theorem to find the third side so pythagorean theorem just says that the two legs meaning like the two sides that connect with the right angle if we square and add those like this if i say x squared plus three squared that's going to equal the hypotenuse, the one that's diagonal or opposite the right angle, that side squared. So then I can just solve and get x by itself to find out what the this side, the adjacent side is. So x squared plus 3 squared is going to be 9, and then 7 squared is 49. So now I just have to subtract 9 from each side to get x squared by itself, and then that's going to equal 40. So remember, I want x, not x squared, so I have to square root each side to get x by itself. So this is going to be x is equal to the square root of 40. Now, um, I also have students ask me, why don't you do plus or minus 40? It's because you can't have like a negative side length of a triangle, so that's why I'm not doing the plus or minus thing here. So now we're going to break this up into factors. So 4 times 10 gives me 40, and I know that 4 is um, a perfect square because 2 times 2 equals 4, so I could take out a 2 for that. So I could say it's 2 root 10. That's what x is equal to. 2 root 10 equals x. So now I can say, okay, my opposite side is 3, and my adjacent side is 2 root 10. But remember, in math, they don't like us to have those radicals on the bottom. We have to get rid of that. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to say 3 over 2 root 10. And I have to get rid of that bottom number right over there. And I'm going to do that by multiplying by 2 root 10 on top and 2 root 10 on bottom. So then when I do that, I'm going to get that this is equal to 6 root 10 over 4 times 10. And um, you can cancel out, um, you can divide by 2 to cancel out, or you can multiply this and get like 6 root 10 over 40 and then simplify. I'm just going to do it right now because I see that 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 goes into 4 2 times. So then I could say that this is equal to 3 root 10 over 20. So 3 root 10 over 20 is going to be G. So that's our answer. This is for ACT math for people asking. Give me one second to get water, guys. Okay, so let's go to number 14. Alex is building something for her architecture class. 
she builds uh, a wheelchair ramp for this class project. After completing the wheelchair ramp, she measures the horizontal length and height. The horizontal length is 18 feet and the vertical height is um, 3 feet. Um, so horizontal, remember, is like the sideways and vertical is the one that's up and down. Which she wants to determine the measure of the acute angle that the wheelchair ramp makes with the horizontal. Which of the following expressions could she use to find this value? Okay, so let's draw out the scenario that's being described here. So I'm going to draw a little triangle right over here. So the ramps over here, the horizontal, um, the horizontal uh, length is 18 feet. So that means that this is going to be 18. This horizontal is sideways, and then the vertical height is going to be three feet. So this is the vertical height right there. And then um, let's call this angle theta. Are you Turkish? Uh, yes, I'm part Turkish. Yes. Um, I don't know how you knew the, that, but um, okay. <laughs> and then um, what we're going to do now is um, we're finding out what are we trying to find? She wants to determine the measure of the cute. So we're trying to find this angle theta is what we're trying to find. So let's see what sides do we have. We have the opposite and the adjacent side. So we have opposite and adjacent. <laughs> and um, sorry, I'm laughing at someone's comment. Okay, so opposite and adjacent would give us tangent. Tangent is equal to the opposite of and adjacent. So tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side, opposite side 3 over the adjacent side 18. So then tan of theta is equal to divide by 3 on top and bottom, and then that's going to be 1 over 6. So it's equal to 1, 6. Oh, but you actually don't have to do that. So I did an extra step I didn't need to. So now to get theta by itself, all I got to do is do the inverse tan of each side because that's the opposite operation of tangent. So like just with like how we solve for x and everything, how we do the opposite to move it to the other side, it's the same thing with tan, sine, all of that. You just do, it's called inverse tan, which looks like this on your calculator. So it has like a little minus 1. And that cancels it out on the left and moves it to the right-hand side. So this is what would be equal to that. I love how you said that I have an accent because I don't speak any Turkish. I can, like, count to ten and that's it. <laughs> and I know how to say, like, hi. And ask for, like, an ice cream with every single flavor and that's it. <laughs> um, so I don't know why, why you think I have an accent, but okay. <laughs> so then um, number 15 says for all theta where it's between that and that, Cosine theta is not equivalent to, so we have not equivalent, so I'm going to circle that to make sure that I'm answering um, in the negative, not the affirmative, so not equivalent. So at the beginning of this video, if you want to go and rewind, I showed you some of the, um, what's it called, the trig identities that you want to, you might want to add on. So one of the trig identities is that the um, cosine of negative theta is equal to the cosine of theta. So automatically, um, we would cross out f because those are equivalent or equal to each other because cosine of negative theta equals cosine of theta. Now, if we look at answer choice g, it says negative cosine of negative theta. Um, they want to know if that equals cosine of theta. So let's look at this identity that we have and let's multiply it all by negative 1 to see if that's true. So if we multiply by negative 1 and distribute, it would be negative cosine of negative theta is equal to negative cosine of theta, not cosine of theta. So this is the one that's not equivalent, so g. So then um, for number 16, um, this is the one that had the little error in the first edition, so that's why there's an arrow because this was supposed to be a plus. Um, but it says if B is an any angle greater than zero degrees, then which of the following is equivalent to sine of B? So for this, you have to picture the unit circle, which is just like, um, looks like this. And where this is just like zero or two pi, this is pi over two, this is pi, and this is, um, and you can think about it in degrees too, but it's usually people think about it in radians, three pi over two. Um, so, if you have some angle B anywhere um, in your unit circle, and you add 360 degrees to it, remember this is a circle, so every 360 degrees is a full circle, or a full like rotation around the circle. So, if you have, like, let's say your angle B is right here, if you go 360 degrees, you add 360 degrees to B, you're just going around the circle to the exact same point. So, anything that you take 
like sine, tangent, secant, all of that is just going to be equal because it's at the same exact point on the circle again. So this would have to be correct. This is equal to the sine of b because it's the same exact point that we're getting to. So then let's go to um, answer. Um, someone asked, what is what time do you go live? Um, so my set schedule is Mondays and Fridays at um, 6 p around 6 p.m. Eastern time. Sometimes it could be a little later if I get off of sessions later. Um, but I've been doing like extra sessions to promote like extra lives when I have time to promote my book. Um, so like there's no set schedule for the other days. But um, which of the following is equivalent to all of this right over here? Okay, so right away, whenever I see sine squared, cosine squared, um, I think about like the identity that goes like this, where you have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. So I'm going to think, how can I use that to my advantage? So let me think, let me think, let me think. So I could take out, I see a greatest common factor here. Sine squared theta is a greatest common factor. So I could take that out on top and bottom. So sine squared theta, if I take it out on top, there's going to be a 1 left there, minus, and then there's going to be a cosine squared theta left over here. And then that's going to be all over, and then um, this is going to be sine squared theta times cosine squared theta. So now I can cross out the sine squared theta on top and bottom, and I'm just left with 1 minus cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Now if we manipulate this equation to... Um, to get sine squared theta by itself, we would get, like if we subtract cosine squared theta from each side, we would get sine squared theta by itself. And then it would be sine squared theta is equal to one minus cosine squared theta. So now, instead of saying one minus cosine squared theta, we can replace it with sine squared theta using that trig identity. And we could say that sine squared theta over cosine squared theta which is just equal to tan squared theta, because tangent is equal to sine over cosine, so that means tangent squared is equal to sine squared over cosine squared. So it would be h. So now let's go to number 18. It says, for all real values of y, which of the following equations is true? So um, again, sine squared, cosine squared, it's probably going to be this trig identity, so let me rewrite that over here. Sine squared theta, that's supposed to be a theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So then what you're going to do now is let's see how we can use this to our advantage. So it looks like all that happened was um, we're getting sine squared by itself somehow. Um, so let's see. If we subtract, let's see, let's see, let's see. Subtract cosine squared theta from each side. Or no, that actually wouldn't work. We would subtract... Um, we would add, uh, hold on. Oh yeah, so I can, it was taking me a second just to see that. So all I do is like, I would subtract one, move it over here, and then I would subtract sine of theta, move it over there. So I'm gonna start by subtracting sine of theta on each side, so then it would be cosine theta is equal to one minus sine squared theta. And then I could minus the one on the other side, and that would uh, be cosine squared theta minus one is equal to negative sine squared theta. And in this case, it's just that theta, whatever's in the parentheses, is equal to 5y. So then that would be equal to the first one right there. So that's true, A. Someone said that you can plug in numbers. Yeah, you could do that. It's just going to take you longer, probably. Um, so then um, let's go. And someone asked about um, which class you can you, you take, do you take this math in? Um, so it depends by your state regulations, like what they do. Um, but typically, this is part of a class called pre-calculus. So then um, let's go to number 19. The Colosseum is 48 meters tall. The angle of elevation formed by a point on the level ground to the top of the Colosseum equals 60 degrees. So let's say this is the Colosseum, right? Let's form a right triangle. So the Colosseum, they said, is 48 meters tall. So 48 meters right here. And then um, the angle of elevation formed by a point on the level ground to the top of the Colosseum, so this would be the angle of elevation, that's theta, and that's equal to 60 degrees in this case. The distance between the point on the ground, right here, and the center of the base of the Colosseum, right here, is equivalent to, so we're trying to find this is our x that we're trying to find, right here. So we have, um, we have an angle, 60 degrees, we have the, um, the opposite side for that angle, and we have 
the adjacent side to this angle. If we have opposite and adjacent, we have tangent. So the tangent of 60 degrees is equal to, and that would be opposite over adjacent. So 48 over x. So now I'm gonna multiply each side by x to get this, and then I'm gonna divide by tan of 60 to get x by itself. So then I'm gonna get 48 over tan of 60 degrees is equal to that side length that we wanted to find. So that would be equal to F right over here. Um, so then, wait, I don't get 17, one minus um, cosine because there is a one minus in the next line. So um, this is going to be, uh, oh, cause you're saying with the minus one, okay. So subtracting one is the same thing as adding negative one. That's why it just looks a little bit different, but it's this, these mean the same exact thing. Okay, and hold on, let me just um, check because I'm supposed to be checking the key while I do this to make sure there's no typos. Do, do, do. And yes, let's go. Okay, so let's go to the next page, number 20. So number 20 says, for the figure shown below, x is in degrees. If tan of x is equal to um, 0 0.75, then what is the length of FH? So right away, whenever they give you like tan of x, sine of x, cosine of x, like any of that equal to a decimal, um, that's just my dog. Don't worry, she's fine. She just has kennel cough right now and is quarantined in here. Anyways, um, so whenever they give you tan of x or cosine sine of x is equal to a decimal, that's going to be equal. You're going to try to make it equal to a fraction. So I know that 0.75 is the same thing as 3 fourths. So tan of x is equal to 3 fourths. That's going to give me more information, more useful information than having the decimal because I can use that for a proportion with the side lengths. So, um, for example, right here, I see that that's seven. And then um, the side length I'm trying to find is f of h. So I'll call that y since we're already using an x right here. So um, what I can do is I can set up a proportion now because I know tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent side. Well, this is the opposite, and this is the adjacent side for our reference angle x, so that means it should also be equal to the opposite, 7, over the adjacent y. So if I just set this up as like a nice little proportion, I could say that 3 fourths is equal to 7 over y. I could cross multiply and solve for y. So I'm going to cross multiply, and that's going to be 3y is equal to 28. Then I'm going to divide by 3 on each side, and I'm going to get that y is equal to 28 over 3. So that's going to be e. Um, does anyone know of a page that does something like this for Common Core, like middle school stuff? Uh, not off the top of my head, but Khan Academy has some videos. Um, I also do some middle, middle school stuff because there's pre-algebra and stuff on the exam. So like if you go to my pre-algebra playlist, you might see some stuff. Um, in the equation below, the angle measures are in degrees. Assume n is between 0 and 90 degrees. What is the value of n? Okay, so remember there's that trig identity that um, says that if we take the sine of some angle, it's going to be equal to the cosine of the complementary angle, 90 minus theta. Like basically if the angles add up to 90, the sine of one equals the cosine of the other. So we can say, okay, that means that these have to be complementary angles. Like one of these has to be theta, one of them has to be 90 minus theta. So we could say that that's going to be, hold on, let me just think really quick how I want to set this up. Um, I'll just say that this, um, I'll say that this is equal to 50. I'll do that because that means that the complementary angle, like 40 plus 50 equals 90. So then I would say that this has to be equal to 50 then, the complementary angle. So then 2n plus 10 is equal to 50. And then we could say, okay, I'm going to subtract 10 from each side because I'm solving for n. It's going to cancel out there. So then I get 2n is equal to 40. Divide by 2 on each side and we get that n is equal to 20. So it would be h. I still don't know the unit circle, lol. Actually, the unit circle, I should do a video on that one day because people get like so confused. It's literally... People think you have to memorize the whole unit circle, but you literally only have to memorize like a quarter of it because everything else is just like logic that you can apply to it. Um, so I should do a video on that one day, I will. 
um, what is the value of sine of 60 times cosine of 45? Now, again, you have your calculator available on the exam. So on the exam, you could do that, and you're going to get, like, decimal values um, for, like, when you plug this in. But what you can do is you can just do the same thing with these, like, plug in, what, root 3 over 2, and then you'll get the decimal value, see what's equal to each other. Um, so that's something that you can do um, if you don't have the unit circle memorized. But if you have the unit circle memorized like me, you can remember that sine of 60 degrees is going to be equal to three uh, root 3 over 2. And then cosine of 45 degrees is equal to root 2 over 2. So then we can just multiply that. That's going to be root 6 over 4. So that would be B. This is for ACT math, so it goes across grade levels for people um, asking what grade this is. Um... So before I take, I'll try to make a, I'll try to remember to um, make a video about um, the unit circle soon. So then um, let's go to, someone said they don't get it. Hold on one second. So there's this thing called the unit circle where you memorize what each of these are equal to. Like sine of 60 is equal to this, cosine of 45 is equal to this. So like this is a memorization thing or you can plug it into your calculator if you want to on the ACT. Um, so, like, I didn't just magically make this into something, like, by some process. It's just memorization. This is a memorization one that you know that that's equal to that, and that's equal to that, and you just multiply them. Um, so then let's go to um, this um, figure and problem is for numbers 23 to 25. For triangle ABC shown below, the distance between A and C, so this right here, is going to be 3,150 uh, miles. So 3,150 miles. The distance between B and D right here is going to be 12 or um, 1,200 miles, so 1,200 miles. The distance between C and D is going to be, so this right here, eh, is going to be equal to 2,250 miles. And the distance between A and B, so this right here, is going to be 1,500 miles. Okay, so um, it says for number 23, what is the value of cosine C? So we're finding cosine C. So this is our reference angle, angle C right here. And we want to find the cosine of C. So cosine of C is going to be equal to the adjacent side. So um, let's see. Well, we... Well, um, oh, and also you know that this is going to be a right triangle, not just because they're, I mean, you could assume that because you can only take cosine with a right triangle. Um, whoa, something just happened. Okay. So you can assume that this is, um, that this is a right angle just because you have to have a right angle for like these cosine problems. Um, or you could see that this is in a ratio of like a right triangle, like the 12, um, the, <coughs> sorry, um, the, uh, this would be the, wait, is that a right triangle? Hold on. Well, it has to be because we're using it for the problem. But um, hold on, let me think really quick. That would be 12. Is that in a ratio for right? I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, because you already know that it has to be if you're taking the cosine. So who cares? Um, so then cosine of C is going to be that it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side would be 2,250 over the hypotenuse, which is going to be BC over here. Now, remember, they didn't tell us what BC is, but um, we could figure out the, oh yeah, this is the, um, the, the three, the five to four to three one. Yeah. I just wasn't even thinking that in my head. I was thinking of the five, 12, 13 one. And I was like, wait, but that's not exactly right. This is the three, four, five one, because you could just see that if you like divide them by the greatest common factor, you're going to see that it's three, four, five. Yes. Or you could do Pythagorean theorem to find the other side and then like see that there's the ratio as well. So then um, we're going to say that cosine of C is equal to 2,250 over BC. But the problem is that we don't know what BC is. But we have a right triangle, so we can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what BC is. So Pythagorean theorem says that the legs squared and added up equals the hypotenuse squared. So that means that 1,200 squared plus 2,250 squared has to equal whatever BC is squared. So then now we can use this to solve for BC and plug it in over here. So um, when we do that, we're going to get that, um, that would be BC squared is equal to 6,502,000, 200,500, 
and that's equal to b c squared. So then now we have to square root each side to get BC by itself. So when we square root each side to get BC by itself, it's going to be that BC is equal to 2,550. So now we can replace that in this formula right here, or this equation, and we could say that the bottom BC is equal to 2,000, whoops, that's supposed to be 2,550. So then we can plug this into the calculator, and that would be close. That would be point zero or zero point eight eight two three yada yada yada. So if we round to the nearest hundredth, it's going to be the point eight eight one, the J one. So all we did was we used Pythagorean theorem to find the the side over here, and then we um we from that we're able to plug it into the cosine of C formula to find what cosine of C is. How'd you get the 6 million? That's just from squaring each of these and adding them up. Um, what's the meaning of cosine of C? So cosine is just the adjacent over the hypotenuse side. So like when you're taking the cosine of C, that means the cosine of this angle is the adjacent side, this side, 2,250 over whatever the hypotenuse is. Okay, so um, I'm glad you understand now. Okay, so let's go to number 24. It says, for triangle ABC, what is the measure of angle C in degrees? So we're talking about the same angle, but we're now trying to find out what its measure is, like how many degrees the, is right here. Um, so for triangle ABC, what is that measure? Okay, so let me think for just one second. Do, 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 do. So we know what cosine C is equal to. We know cosine of C is equal to 2,250 from the previous problem. 2,250 um, over 2,550. So if we want to solve for what C is, we have to get C by itself by doing the opposite of cosine. The opposite of cosine is inverse cosine, which looks like this in your calculator. So basically, you would do the inverse cosine on each side that cancels out the cosine on the left and brings this over to the right-hand side. It's just like algebra where you do the opposite operation. It just happens to be that the opposite operation is like inverse cosine here. And then it would be 2,550 on the bottom. So then you would just plug this into your calculator exactly as is. Make sure your calculator would be in degree mode. Um, and then um, what you're going to get when you plug that in would be 28.07 yada, yada, yada. So it would be A. So... Um, Let's see. And then this one says in radian. So remember, like always check if you're in degree mode or radian mode. Um, now, for most of the exam, you need to be in degree mode. So like just I would keep it like that if you're really bad at like using your calculator until the very end on any radians problems, um, just as an extra tip. Um, for ABC, triangle ABC, what is the measure of angle C in radians? So again, we found what it is in degrees. So what we could do is we could do the um, we could either plug this in the exact same way and just make sure our calculator is in radian mode, or you could say, hey, I'm going to take this and I'm going to use the um, the formula or the um, the strategy that I know for turning degrees into radians, which would be that if you already have the degrees 28.07 whatever ever ever, um, in that case we just like rounded it off. Um, to turn it into something with radians, you multiply by pi over 180. So you could do that. Or the easier way, like I said, is just make sure you're in radian mode and plug in this exact same thing, and then it gives it to you in radians. So when you plug in this exact same thing, just making sure that you're in radians in your calculator, you're going to get that it's equal to 0 0.489, yada, yada, yada. So that would be J. So then um, let's go to how do you calculate the angle? So all you do is you put this into your calculator and you make sure that it's in either degrees if you're solving for degrees or radians if you're solving for radians because we knew that the cosine was equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Um, and so it's equal to this. And then you just have to get C by itself because that's the angle. So you do the opposite operation, inverse cosine to each side. And you just have to make sure that if you're solving for degrees, you're in degree mode in your calculator. So there will be like a little DEG written usually in like the corner of your calculator. And then if you're in radian mode, that there's like a little RAD, like you're in radian mode in your calculator. So then, um, and then also a shortcut to know, like if they don't tell you if you should use radians or degrees is most of the time you need to use degrees. And then um, in the rare cases that you have to use radians, it'll be something with pi in it. Um, 
So then let's go to 26. It says assume that tan x equals a negative value and x is the angle measure in degrees. Which of the following can be true? Okay, so um, I forget what the, the thing is for uh, the, there's like an acronym that kids use all the time where it's like um, something about science class or something. I don't remember, <laughs> but there's like a, a, an acronym that you guys use that includes like science class about like which uh, quadrants are positive for the different, um, the different like tangent sine, cosine, all of that. Um, so basically the one where, um, tangent could be negative is the one over here and over here, because these are the ones where it could be only like sine, only one of them is positive, like sine or cosine. So if one of them is positive, the other one's negative, it makes a negative, um, tan value. So these are the quadrants where we could have that tan of X is a negative value. Now, if we're thinking about our unit circle, remember, then this would be like zero or two pi, because they're talking in radians. This would be equal to pi over two. This is equal to pi. And then this is equal to three pi over two. Um, all students take calculus. Is that like the, the new one now? <laughs> I've heard so many of them, but I remember like the one that was popular recently was about science class or something. <laughs> So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to say, okay, it has to be in this quadrant or this quadrant. So which of these are talking about those quadrants? So it says for number one, X is in quadrant four. So the way we label the quadrants is this is quadrant one. This is number two. This is number three. And this is number four. So it could be in quadrant four. Th that could be true. So one is true. It could be true. Now, it has to be between um, pi over 2 and pi right over here. That is true as well. It could be there. It has to be between pi and 3 pi over 2 right here. That's not true. Remember, it can only be in these, these two right here. So that's not true. So it could only be 1 and 2. Let's see, me watching this to take a break from MCAT studying. <laughs> Good luck on your MCAT. <laughs> okay, so then let's go to number um, 27 triangle abc is a right triangle ab is the hypotenuse of the right triangle okay so let's start drawing this out so it's a right triangle and ab is the hypotenuse so ab is the side that's um opposite the right angle right over here and so that means that this has to be c so then um ac would be equal to 5 and then bc is equal to 12 it says a student draws a point on the hypotenuse of this triangle and labels this point D. So right here, um, the measure of ACD, so let's draw like a little dotted line. So like this right here, ACD, that angle is equal to X degrees. And then um, angle DCB right here is equal to Y degrees. Which of the following is equivalent to sine of X minus cosine of Y? Okay, so these are complementary angles because X plus Y adds up to a 90 degree angle. Remember, one of our, um, one of our, what's it called, uh, trig identities says that if we have the sine of one angle, it's equal to the cosine of the complementary angle. Now, since X and Y are complementary, that holds true here. The sine of X is equal to the cosine of the other angle that adds up to 90, so the cosine of Y. They're equal to each other. So if we are trying to find out what sine of x minus cosine of y is, sine of x is the same thing as saying cosine of y. So we're really just saying that we're subtracting, if we want to replace cosine of y with sine of x, we could do that, or vice versa, we could have said cosine y minus cosine y. But these are equal to each other, so we're subtracting the same thing from itself, that's just going to be equal to zero. So the only one this would be would be one, um, Roman numeral number one, f.